Assalamu alaikum. Uh, can you explain chapter 2 of Revelation, verse 20? Who, who is this woman, Jezebel? I never heard of her. The book of Revelation is chapter 2, mm-hmm. when it speaks about the seven churches. They're really speaking about seven different denominations or religions that came out of the East. Alright? No. Nah. What verse is he talking about for Jezebel? The 20th verse to the second chapter. Want me to read it? Yes, please do. Okay. Kiss me last, my rain. Notwithstanding, I have found a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman. Okay, Jezebel. now, what happens is, I just, I'm sorry for cutting you off like that. That's right. The 18th verse of the chapter 2 is telling you which church they're talking to. And unto the angel of the church, right, mm-hmm. of Thyteria, write these things. That's the son of whom? Of Allah. Who has his eyes like unto a flame of fire and his feet like unto fine brass. They're talking to the Hindu church. Jezebel is a symbol here. But the word Jezebel really means destruction, wickedness. The word Jezebel is synonymous with the word wickedness. Jezebel was the daughter of a Sidonian, which is nothing but another word of saying an Amorite. Right? She was one of a key worshipper of the god Baal, which is an idol god. And she became the wife of the king Ahab. Okay? This verse is symbolic. The 18th part of the second revelation is talking to the church of Hinduism. And it'll go on to say, I know thy works and charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works and, and the, the last to be more, more than, than the, the first. first. In other words, he's saying, I know thy works and thy charity and thy service and thy faith and thy patience. It's telling them their patience, their charity is greater than their service and their faith. Nevertheless, I have a few things against thee. You do some good things, but I have still things against In Hinduism, there's a lot of great things, a lot of things that have to do with not killing other animals, being vegetarians, being, you know, very disciplined, meditating, chanting, mantras. But Hinduism is an ancient religion of faith. Remember that. Watch what he says. Because thou have what? Suffers that woman Jezebel. Uh huh. Which calleth herself a prophetess. You see? That means, but you have worshipped the female god. When they speak of Krishna, they have Krishna as a male god with a female body. And inside the religion of Hinduism, they have rituals that pertain to the Kama Sitra, which deal with sexual explicitness, is the word or whoredom and free lucrative sex between males and females you can find a book called the Kama Sutra which relates to the Hindu faith you follow what I'm saying? and it's speaking about whoredomness that prevails over the Hindu faith that looseness go ahead to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols you see that's what they do there in India the Hindu faith they have all kind of God for this and God for that you know, rituals for this and rituals for that. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication. What? And she repented not. That's right. He said to her, different men who rose up in India, who had the knowledge of Tawheed, to try to convert them from their devil worship, like the city of Pakistan, who started trying to spread Islam. And what they used, they had a war between Jinnah back in the 18th century, a Muslim tribe and the Hindus, and the devil got in there and caused them to battle against the devil this during the time of Mahatma Gandhi. This is a historical repeat of the history of India for centuries. Allah constantly tried to convert them back to Islam and they kept going towards their idols and monkeys and cows. Remember the cow worship that they use in Hinduism is the same cow worship that Aaron and them used while Moses was up in the mountain, Moshe was up in the mountain getting the laws for Israel and the children of Israel started worshipping the golden calf. That's the same calf that they use in Hinduism. Same ritual. Go ahead. Behold, I will cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation except they repent of her deed, of their deeds. And I will kill her children with, with death. death. This is why India stays in a state of poverty and destruction. It goes on. And all the churches shall know that I am he which searches the rings and hearts. And I will give in, unto every one of you according to your works. So he's telling them the seven Jesus was talking way back in Revelation, the beginning of uh, Revelations 2, when they received this revelation, they're talking to the different churches. 
each one of the religions that came out of the east were being called back to the oneness of the creator at the coming of Jesus and most of them didn't comply okay I'll just make it clear if you go to um, Revelation chapter 2 verse 1 it says unto the angel of the church of Euphrates write these things that he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. The later on teaches the seven stars with the seven angels. They give you a whole thing. In the first revelation it's about what those seven things, you know, he saw meant. Okay? I know thy works and thy labors and thy patience and how thou cannot bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and have found them liars because Jesus speaks about many false prophets there was false prophets false apostles in this time too if you look at that Acts 13 where they speak about the Jesus and the Christians the worship in the day a lot, of, a lot of Christians think that they're following Jesus the Messiah and they're not they're following a different Jesus who was a false prophet and a, a, a magician who performed magic but all the Christians in their church today under the impression that they're following Jesus the son of Mary go to your 13th chapter and you'll find out which Jesus that they're following right now the first thing in 13th chapter tells you now there were what okay, the there were prophets, in the church certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simon that was called Niger mm -hmm. and Lucius of Cyrene mm -hmm. and Manian, which had been brought up with Herod. Now this guy Simon was black. This Simon is Simon Bar Jesus, which means Simon the son of Jesus in Aramaic. And they don't call you the son of, they just call you by your name. This man therefore was being called Jesus in Jesus' time, had the same name. Now watch what we read. With Herod, the Tetra, and Saul. As a minister, Saul, make note, is who Paul is. He's going to change his name right in this chapter and name himself after some Greek he meets. Go ahead. As they minister to the Lord and fast, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas, and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them. See, now they're saying that, <laughs> that their works are different, that the Holy Ghost came to them and told them, Separate them. But their works are going to be different. That's because Paul took it upon himself right here. He's going to start making up his own church. Christian church is something made up by Paul right from this verse. Go ahead. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost departed unto Seleucia. And from thence they sailed to Cyprus. And when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of Allah in the synagogue of the Jews. So where were Paul and Barnabas teaching first? To the Jews. It wasn't going to Gentiles because they were obeying Christ when he said don't go to the way of the Gentiles. They were teaching people who were of the family of Israel first. Watch how it goes. And they had also John to their minister. Okay. And when they had gone through the isles unto Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer. They found a man, the word sorcerer, is a person who performs magic. Or, if you believe in it, miracles. You see, magic if you don't believe in it, miracles if you do. You understand? Because they said Jesus was a sorcerer at one time. Because he did things they couldn't understand. They found a certain man who was a sorcerer. First of all, he had the power to perform miracles or magic. And... A false prophet. He was a prophet. Be he false, but to certain people, he must have been believed, so he was a prophet. A false prophet, but he was a prophet. So we have a man who was a, he had the power to perform miracles, a man who was also called a prophet. What else? A Jew. And he was of the house of Judah, the same seed Jesus was from. Jesus was a man who performed miracles, which people called magic. Jesus was a prophet, and Jesus was from the house of Judah, and this is what the people was expecting to come as their savior, right? Uh -huh. Now, what was his name? Whose name was Bar Jesus. Son of Jesus. Bar Jesus. The word Bar 
write it down, is nothing but Aramic for the word son. So this man's name was also Jesus. They would not say son of, they just would call you, they don't call you son of, if your father's name is Bill, they don't call you son of Bill, they call you Bill. You understand? This man was Simon Bar Jesus. This Jesus here had the power to do what? Perform miracles. <laughs> he was of the house of Judah. And he was also called a prophet. This is who the Christians are worshipping. And they think they're worshipping the Messiah. Go ahead, it's going to explain that. If you want, you can turn to 8, 9, and it'll back it up. Go back to the same thing. Acts chapter 8, verse 9. But there was a, but there was a certain man called Simon which before time in the same city used sorcery. Now here's that same Simon again. That's the same guy whose name is Jesus here. What does it say about him? Used sorcery. Go ahead. And bewitched the people of Samaria. That means the people of Samaria believed in him because he bewitched them. So they thought his magic was miracles. They believed in him. Go ahead. Giving out. Go back and read it again. Yeah. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one. Wait a minute now. He made people think that he was something great. And he had them fooled because he had bewitched them. Now here we go. Let's go back. This man's name is Jesus. This man performed miracles. This man was called a prophet. And he was of the house of Judah. And he had tricked these people into believing that he was somebody great. Christians don't even know this is in the Bible, you know. <laughs> they don't even know this is there. Go ahead. To whom they all gave heed. What did they do? Gave heed. They all gave heed. That means what? They listened. They believed it. They believed this guy was Jesus. Simon, they believed Jesus. They thought that he was who? The Messiah. Of the house of? Judah. Coming to perform? Miracle. And was a prophet. They believed it, they said. They took heed to him. What else? From what? From the least to the greatest. All of them, the king and the peasants, from the least to the greatest, they all believed that this man was Jesus. Go ahead. Saying, this man is the great power of Allah. Where did they say he came from? He said he came from. From the Creator. They thought that this man was the power sent from God, as they have it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what they believe. Go ahead. And to him they had regard, because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. That's right. This man had tricked these people with sorcery, and they believed that this man was none other than God. Notice that in the same book, this is where the Christians get their name. Christian from where they get called Christians in Antioch for the first time this is where Paul gets his name from this is where they get the concept of Jesus being from God and having power from this source of a name Bar Jesus this is not the Jesus of the Messiah of the Quran that we know of this is not the Jesus of the book of the Revelation that we know of this is a different Jesus obviously because the Jesus they talk about tells you to worship him right they say Jesus says worship him. But the Jesus we know about in Matthew 125, which was the firstborn, was a man. In Matthew 3.13, he had to be baptized. In Matthew 4.1, he was tempted of Satan. In Matthew 4.2, he fasted. In Matthew 8.24, he fell asleep. In Matthew 11, 19, he stopped in 8. In Matthew 21, 18, he even got hungry. In Mark 1, 9, he was baptized. In Mark 1, 13, he was tempted of the devil. In Mark 4, 38, he fell asleep. Again, I'm going straight through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. In Luke 2, 21, he was circumcised here. In Luke 7.34, he stopped and ate again. In Luke 8.23, he was asleep again. John 4.6, he weary. He got weak, that means. John 4.7, he drank. John 5.30, he had to do his father's will. John 
1928, he's thirsty. And then John 2017, he said, but about something that he should know. He said, I have not ascended, but so tell them that I did. I did. In the books of Hebrew, he doesn't glorify himself, he glorifies the Father. In the book of James, he says that the Heavenly Father cannot be tempted. That's the Jesus we know who had all those attributes. That's the Jesus of the Holy Quran we call Jesus the Messiah. The son of Mary sent from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and strengthened by the Spirit. That's the one we know. <laughs> the Christians are worshipping the wrong Jesus. They're worshipping some sorcerer who they are attributing a lot of magic powers to and saying that he is God himself. They got their Bibles confused. I feel sorry for them. Paul did this, you know. Go back to Acts 13 and continue. Okay. Which was <clears throat> which was with the deputy of the country of Sigiris, Sigiris, Paulus. That's where Paul got his name from. That's when he changed his name from Saul. He named himself after this guy. Right? Because this guy, Bar Jesus, was a deputy officer in Sigiris. And Paulus was the man that he went up under. Go ahead. A prudent man. Arrogant man. Prudent. Who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of Allah. But Elamus, the sorcerer, that's another name for him, which is where we get our word Alam from, knowledge. They called him, because Elamus is not but Elam, knowledge in Arabic. They called him. He was learned, this sorcerer. Go ahead, Elamus, the sorcerer. Go ahead. So is his name by interpretation. Withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. That's right. Trying to convert this deputy from their evil faith into the truth. Then Saul, now he changed his name after he met this man. Then Saul, who what? Also is called Paul. That's where he got the name Paul there. When Jesus supposedly spoke to him on the roadside, according to him, he didn't call him Paul. He said to him what? Saul. 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 He converted himself to a newfound faith, trying to compromise with this government here and introduce a new god, a sorcerer, and have your grandmothers and your grandfathers in them in church praying to a man named Bar Jesus, a sorcerer, and not Jesus the Messiah. And Jesus made that clear in St. John chapter 1, verse 41. What did he say? Does they first find his own brother Simon, which says we found the Messiah, which is being interpreted to Christ. Right in St. John chapter 1, verse 41, they say Simon and them found the Messiah, but they're calling him the Christ. They interpret it as something else. You see what I'm saying? They're not following the Prophet Rasulullah, bin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Isa ibn Maryam, alayhi salatu wa salam. They're not following him. They're worshipping this part of Jesus who walks around performing magic and tricks people with sorcery and bewitches people. And I'm talking about the humble man we know who I just ran off a whole list of his human natures. I can go straight to things throughout the scriptures that'll show us what Jesus was. Because if you start from Genesis, you see that Abraham fell on his face in Genesis 17.3. You find that Moses and Aaron fell on their faces in prostration of prayer in Numbers 26. You find that Joshua, who succeeded Moses, fell on his face, fell down and prostrated on his face like Muslims do in Joshua 5.14. And you find that Jesus fell on his face in Matthew what? 26.39. In Mark 14.35. In Luke 24, 36, Jesus said, As-salamu alaykum. And John 20, 19, he said, As-salamu alaykum. In John 20, 21, he said, As-salamu alaykum. And in John 20, 26, he said, As-salamu alaykum. With that, Christians walk up to each other and say, Hello. <laughs> so they're not following what Jesus said. They showed you here that Jesus did everything any other Muslim did. He worship the way we worship. Christians go and put bread and wine in their mouth and say it's blood and flesh. They're following what Paul 
taught them about a sorcerer called Bar Jesus. That is their God. That is who they are worshiping. So when Muslims are getting into arguments with them, it's a fruitless argument because unfortunately, the Muslims don't realize that the Christians don't realize that who they're worshiping is a sorcerer. Let's go back over what he was. He was of the house of Judah. Yes or no, the Bible says. Yes. He performed miracles. Yes or no? Yes. He was a prophet. Yes or no? Be yes. false or true. This is what they believe because he bewitched them, did he? Yes. So how do the Christians know that they're not following this guy because Paul's one of water? How do they know they're not following this one and neglecting the other? You know what? They don't know. And when you go through the Christian teaching and you say this, did Jesus the Messiah keep the Judaic law? Yes, he did. Was Jesus the Messiah in compliance with all the teachings of the Torah? All the teachings of the Torah, from not eating pork, laid on up to the, the white dress, and the keeping of the Sabbath, and the eight-day circumcision, and Yom Kippur, and Rosh Hashanah? Did Jesus keep these religious laws? Yes. How do you know it? Because in St. John chapter 16, Verse 1, what does it say? Let's turn to it and see what it says. This is Jesus giving his last sermon. What does he say? St. John chapter 16, verse 1. These, These things, things have I spoken unto you that ye should what? Not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogue. Jesus is talking to his disciples and he's telling them they're going to get put out of the synagogue. We'll say that's because there wasn't no churches back then. In the book of Revelation, chapter 2, there was churches. There was churches. The churches pertained to other faiths. The so-called house of Israel went to synagogue. And the disciples of Jesus went to synagogue. It's the same as a masjid to worship. You follow? Do you people gather talking to the Christians? Do you gather for the Sabbath on Saturday? Or do you go to balance and worship the sun god on Sunday? Do you make preparations for the Sabbath on Friday for Yom Juma? Yes or no? No, you don't. I'm not talking to Muslims. I'm talking to Christians. No, you don't. You gather on Sunday and worship the sun god. Did Jesus wear a beard, which is fitra? Law, a fitra is a law that Abraham has passed down. They got pictures of Jesus with a beard. Yet the Jehovah Witnesses refuse to wear a bed. Yet they say, you can't get to heaven unless you follow Jesus' example. Jesus said, no one will see the Father except by me. But when it comes down to following Jesus' example, all of a sudden they get this acute case of amnesia. Did Jesus eat pork? No. Jesus didn't eat no pig feet, no bacon, no none of this stuff that you people eat. Jesus lived in accordance with the law. Leviticus chapter 11 verse 7 or Deuteronomy 7 11 he lived by those laws and he said it would not change until the end but let's go back to Acts 11 and the apostles and the brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles this is Acts 11 1 heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God and when Peter was come up to Jerusalem that they were of the circumcision contended with him. Now this is the point where you're going to find where, where Paul tried to alleviate the laws of circumcision. Right after this there. They found out the Gentiles have been converting. This is something they didn't expect. They were surprised to find out that there were people who were Gentiles who were converting to the faith. They were not ready for this teaching. They didn't know where it came from. You understand that? Let's go on. Now we get into Acts 13.6. In Acts 13.6, we read, Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter said unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do, thou knowest not. Now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. 
Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but he that is clean every whit, what? And ye are clean, be not all. Now we're talking about purification of the body, washing of the feet, washing of the hands. Jesus is not speaking of a purification of the body by some fire coming down out of heaven. Peter was expecting Jesus to wash his feet, which is Judaic tradition for purification, not for no fire to come down out of heaven to purify them. They're altering the teachings of Jesus. Paul was altering the teachings of Jesus because Paul had people worshiping the wrong Jesus. Paul had people following Bar Jesus. Christians today are following a man named Bar Jesus who was a sorcerer, who worked in witchcraft, who did magic. Um, I just wanted to know, um, they, I heard him say before that um, we're not supposed to be separated in different sects. You know, it's correct. Like, you know, okay. So, why would your, uh, your this community be called Ansara community? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be that it should be called a Islamic community or Mus Muslim community instead of Ansar because it makes people confused? That's a very good question. Other than the fact that on every book we put out, <laughs> I mean every book we put in the public, we put a quote on it. And that quote is in the Holy Quran, and it's the 61st chapter, the 14th verse of the Holy Quran. And it reads, Ya ayyuhallazina amanu kunu ansar Allah. And that reads in translation, O you which are of those who are faithful, kunu, which is a order, ka, write it on the board, ka, wow, no wow Ali. That is an order tense for a group of people telling them to be something. Become this. And this is a revelation from the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he's saying to us, Ya ayyuhallazina amanu kunu ansar Allah. Oh you who are faithful, become ansar Allah. You see? So, no, we don't classify ourselves with the other sects or the other schisms, the Ashia, the things that they became. We get our name from the scriptures where it tells us what we should be called. If they go to Masjid Tikwa, Masjid Taqwa, Masjid Baruch, Masjid Abu Bakr, or Masjid Jamia, or, or any other name that they make up, that's not what they're being commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Quran. If they're not being commanded by Allah in the Quran to be these things, they call themselves Ikhwani Muslim, the Islamic Brotherhood, but they don't find that verse in the Quran. Quran to support that. It says all Muslims are brothers, that's understood. We get our name from a verse in the Quran, 61, 14, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking to Isa and Maryam. And all of the Muslim world acknowledge that in the last day, Isa al Masih would return. And if Isa al Masih is to return, and his followers in the scriptures are referred to as Nasri, and then when he comes back with the boats of following him, then we would become what? Nasrullah. And that's what happened. They asked Jesus, or Jesus asked his disciples when he said that they were beginning to become doubters or questioners. Oh, he said, who are my helpers? Who are Ansari? And they said, Nahnu Ansarullah. We are Allah's haters. So, no. The sectism that exists today predominantly starts because of red Arabs who hate black Arabs. www.nawapuinc.com now have a series of over 90 true light tapes by popular demand our master teacher and spiritual guide Asayid al-Imam Isa al-Hadi al-Mahdi has for your listening pleasure and enlightenment a series of over 90 true light tapes covering such topics as why use the books of the New Testament is Allah's name Jehovah the 200 fallen angels which Jesus do you follow and much much more
also write or ask for a list of the most dynamic books in history, authored by the world-renowned scholar, Sayyid al-Imam Isa al-Hadi al-Mahdi. May Allah protect him. We will now continue with our broadcast. They call us Abid, all different types of things, because Ali, wa Fatima, wa Rasulullah, who referred to it in the Quran as Ahl al-Bayt, were dark-skinned Arabs. You see, Abdu Mataleb, who was the grandfather of the Prophet Muhammad, whose wife's name was Awatib. Awatib was a Sudanese. Abdu Mataleb was a black Arab. Muhammad's father, Abdullah, was a black Arab. They were slaves, Abdul, Abdul Mataleb, slaves of Mataleb. You understand? And they were the keepers of the Kaaba. It was Abu Bakr, who the Sunni Muslims referred to as Abu Bakr Sadiq. Abu Bakr, the one that can be trusted, who was the father of Aisha, who was one of, one of the wives of Rasulullah. They were the Red Arabs. And they opposed the Black Arabs. So as soon as Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went to the higher life as you call death, they immediately stepped in and started oppressing them, taking away their property. And many times the Prophet Muhammad mentioned that Ali should be his successor. And if he didn't mention it, the Holy Quran says so, because the Holy Quran speaks about how when Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, the husband of Elizabeth, was about to die, he asked Allah for a son in order for him to be his heir, his successor. And Allah granted him this, which means that Allah sees that a successorship should be in the bloodline. Abraham cried because he had no son to succeed him. And he was given a son, Ishmael, because his first wife and half-sister, Sarah, could not produce the son, which he later did under the name of Ishaq or Isaac. So the Bible is constantly telling you that successorship should be from family relations. And then when people say, well, all Rasulullah had left was a daughter named Fatima, <laughs> and they understood the name Fatima means to be cut off. Because to a certain man in the Quran, he was saying that Rasulullah was Abadan. Inna atinaq al-kawtar fasalli li rabbika wanhar inna shaniyak al-khu al-abatar You see? Inna atinaq al-kawtar Surely we have given you the abundance or a lot Fasalli li rabbika wanhar So worship is for your sustainer and sacrifice the same way Abraham did Inna shaniyak al-khu al-abatar and surely all those people who are wicked, they will be abatar, they'll be cut off. And the men that opposed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they were cut off. And Rasulullah was given a daughter named Fatima, whose name means to be cut off or to consist from something. And she married Ali, which is still blood, still from the family of Abraham. And they gave birth to Hassan and Hussein, and one of their sons died. And that was the line, but the other Arabs opposed them and hated them. And what they did is they broke off and formed a sect which called itself following the Sunnah. Thus they call themselves Sunni. And they're proud to say that they follow the Sunnah instead of we follow the Quran. <laughs> They stand up and boast about it, and they say, we are Sunni, we follow the Sunnah. And we turn around them and we laugh and say, well, we are Ansari, and we follow the Quran. We follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what He says. We don't follow what men say, and they say, well, the Prophet Muhammad said, there's two things I left. Qurani wa Sunnati. My Quran and my Sunnah, or El Quran wa Sunnah, the Quran and my Sunnah. They say, well, where do you find that at? In the Quran. It happens not to be in the Quran, that also happens to be in their Hadith. <laughs> they're not finding it in the Quran, they're finding it in some book they made up. Muslims don't follow no men named Bukhari, or Muslim, or Tilmiz. Muslims follow Allah wa Rasuluhu. 
which is Allah and his apostle, which in our case was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then we get our example from his actions, but not as recorded by men, by things he did. That's sunnah. So the sectism in the world today is a product of racism when Rasulullah left and Ali, who was a black, dark-skinned Arab, and the Iranians have a picture of him. They drew it centuries ago, and they have it drawn, and they sell it in Iran as a black Arab, and I have a book coming out with a copy of the picture in it, so you'll see it yourself. They didn't draw Ali looking like Ayatollah Khomeini, looking Jewish. They drew him looking like a black man, for hollow. From South Philly. You follow what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So the sexism has come out because of racism way back over 1400 years ago. Because they were trying to cut off our seed the same way they've been doing since Adam and he bliss in the garden. Because they can't bow. And when Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made certain statements about the Mahdi who would come after him. And let me make this clear because people have a tendency to say that I say I'm the Mahdi. I'm not saying I am the Mahdi. Stop telling people I say I am the Mahdi. I am not saying I am the Mahdi. It's wrong. Muhammad Ahmed, Ibn Abdullah, the man you see on the wall to your right, that was the Mahdi. He's the one who fulfilled all of the prophecies of the Mahdi. He had the mole on his right cheek, the gap between his teeth, the high forehead. He was born in Donazla in Lubuk in Sudan. In the 1300th century of A.H., he, de he declared himself the Mahdi. He conquered all the evils of Sudan and spread the dawah of the Mahdi throughout the East. That was the Mahdi. Do you know why they don't accept him? We know why they don't accept him. Simple answer, he's black. And white Arabs are waiting for some white savior. They hate me because I'm black. But they'll take a Sheikh Sharawi or Jamal Bedri or anybody else. But Elijah Muhammad they didn't like because he was black. They don't like me because I'm black. And company. <laughs> According to the Solomon's book, I am black for company for you daughters of Jerusalem, like the tents of Kedah. I'm sorry that I don't please you the way I look, but I'm not here to please you, I'm here to teach the truth. al -Hak. And whether you like me or not, I'm going to still teach the truth. Because that's what Allah has enjoined on me to do, whether I want to or not. You don't think I'm tired of talking right now? You don't think my voice is hurting? I hear you. Some people say, this guy just stands there and screams and screams for hours. I'm tired, but I got to keep on moving. I got to keep preaching. I got to keep teaching. I got to keep explaining. I got to keep showing because that's my job. Because I'm a different kind of doctor. I'm a doctor that's sent here to cure for people that have a very, very bad disease. That disease is ignorance. And I'm not supposed to be liked. I keep my eyes open. I know when y'all don't like me, you throw rocks at them. I keep my eyes open, but I'm not going to duck. I'm going to catch the rock and throw it back. I'm not that kind of guy. If I keep my hand on the rock, I'm hitting you back with it. If you think I'm going to turn the other cheek so you can hit me on the other jaw, you out your mind. Hit me, I'm hitting you back. Because when Jesus was struck, what did he do? He turned tables. He told his disciples, turn your cheek, they say. Then he told them, sell your sandals and buy swords because we're getting ready to get down. <laughs> right? No. Abraham didn't turn his other cheek, did he? No. Did Moses? No. Did Muhammad? No. Did the Mahdi? No. Should we? No. All right then. <laughs> That's the day and time we're in. I'm not telling you all to start the revolution because you ain't going to win inside America. Because <laughs> the man got this one organized. But I'm talking about your own people. Sunni Muslims used to come out against us constantly with all kinds of threats. Don't come no more. We ain't playing that no more. So you understand this? why we have sectism? All because the successorship of Muhammad would have fell in the hands of black Arabs and would have took it back towards Sudan and the white Arabs couldn't tolerate that. Because there was a racist society when Muhammad came. If there wasn't, Bilal wouldn't have been in slavery. And the Muslims acknowledged that Bilal, radiallahu anhu, was a slave, right? 
who have no racism in Arabia at the time of Muhammad, why was Bilal in slavery? And when they said when Muhammad came, he brought Bilal out of slavery. Yes, Abu Bakr was he did buy Bilal out of slavery. But that means that the mentality of the people at that time was that blacks should be slaves. And you just don't come along and change the people by just saying blacks are not slaves anymore. They don't work that way. They still see you as inferior until you get an equal position. And nowhere in the history of Islam did it ever show you black in the equal position. Because the way the Sunni Muslims predict Bilal, you know how they put, you know what they say? Bilal was a singer. Because he used to call the Azan. The same old thing. We still a song and dance thing. Bilal was a man who would call his on because he had such a beautiful voice. He was a black Ethiopian, etc., etc., etc. But they didn't have him as equal. They had him as the singer. They had him as the James Brown of their day and time. So they still were racist. And when Ali came to power, they didn't want him there. Eventually, they killed him. They caused Fatima to die because of the way they abused her pertaining to her father. Hassan was killed by his wife by those same white Arabs who brought her into killing him. And Hussein was eventually massacred and tortured on the 10th day of the month of Muharram just because they hated him. So back then, in the time of the Prophet Muhammad, when the Sunni Muslims in America talking, they're not telling you how the Black Sea was being persecuted back then, the same way we are today. And I repeat, and I repeat over and over and over again. If I was a little bit lighter, to them, I'd be a whole lot brighter. Hey, the truth is the truth. Assalamu alaikum. Um, the first one was about uh, Saul and uh, Barnabas, but he was speaking about them, speaking to their people. Uh, I understand that you said that Saul was a self appointed apostle. Uh, how did Barnabas uh, represent himself at that time? Uh, when they both were speaking to the people. Paul wanted to stop baptizing. Right. See, if you look in your Bible at uh, Matthew 28, 19, you're going to see where Jesus tells people to baptize people in the name of the Father, which is the Heavenly Father, our Father who art in heaven, the Son, which was in Himself, because you can't get to the Father, but by Him, and the Holy Spirit, which is the angel that appeared to Mary, that endowed her with the Spirit of His conception. He did baptize in those three, which His disciples said was one. He did. He kept them as, as a separate spirit. All right? Mm -hmm. If you read that section, uh, Matthew 28, 19, you'll see how Jesus commanded people to baptize. Now Paul, on the other hand, in 1 Corinthians 1, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17, or 14 and 17. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. This is Paul saying that. However, Paul is the one who said, go baptize the Gentiles. He was very confused. You know, and he's going to take honor in not baptizing when Christ said to baptize. Go to court, Jesus. I thank God that I I thank God that I baptized none of you for Christmas and Gaius. He speaks of the only people he baptized wasn't even Jews, wasn't even Israelites. He speaks about two Greeks. He's thanking the Almighty that he didn't baptize nobody except two people. He's going directly against what Christ taught. Right. Directly, right in the Bible. Look for the life of me understand why preachers don't see this. I just don't understand what's wrong with these people. It says right there in Matthew 28, 19, what? Read 28, 19 again. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And that's what Jesus tells them to do, correct? Right. And then right again in Corinthians, Paul says what? I thank God what? I thank God that I baptized none of you. And then he says in Corinthians for, 17, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of the word. Yes, what was wrong with Paul? What was his problem? His problem was he was sent to bring Jesus down. And believe it, he succeeded. He gave birth to a bunch of churches who are anti-Christ. You know why you know? Because Jesus said in Matthew 24, many are going to come in my name. You right? Right. Many are going to come in my name and say what? I am Christ and shall receive many. That's right. Remember the quote I gave you the other day? Yeah, yeah, I remember that one. Read this one to them. Okay, this is in um, Matthew... 
seven. That's right. Begin with verse 21. Now listen to this quote real close. Because a lot of you need to write this one down and ask questions about this one. Because this is going to cover all your healers, your faith healers, your evangelists, all these people saying that Christ sent them. Be what Jesus says about these people. Okay, so Matthew 7, begin with verse 21. Mm -hmm. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. He says, not everybody who calls out to him, Lord, Lord, is going to enter the kingdom of heaven. Go ahead, what does he say? It says here, uh, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Stop. Who did Jesus command them? Whose will should they do? Will of the Father. According to Jesus. Now, this is the Bible. I want everybody with a Bible, if y'all could read that together, maybe some way the Spirit will reach out to these ignorant people if we all just, let's all read it together. Ready? Not everyone that says unto, unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Was y'all with me? Now let's get to the next verse. But, but he, he that does the will of my, my let's say, father, father, my father. father. And where did Jesus say that was at? Which is in heaven. heaven. He said, our father who are in heaven. heaven. So let's see. Only people who do the will of my father. What did Jesus say was the highest of all the commandments? That you should love the Lord thy God and him alone. Him alone shall you serve. I am not greater than he who sent me. You cannot serve two masters. They didn't move from two to three. He said no man can serve two. They got you doing three. They're burying people in the name of the Holy Spirit in Jesus. Marrying people in the name of the Holy Spirit in Jesus. And not in the name of the Heavenly Father who Jesus the Messiah sent to the world to prove the world of sin. Commanded us to do. They're doing everything but following him. They're doing this maliciously. And this was done by those people like Paul, who when Jesus called out to him, called out to him in Hebrew. Right? He said, Saul, Saul. But he took it upon himself even after he was called Saul by the Christ to refer to himself as Paul. Now, if, the, if you consider Jesus as God incarnate, and I just said this yesterday, I'm going to say it again. If you believe that Jesus was God incarnated into the human flesh, whatever God calls you, that should be your name. But if he calls you Saul, and you turn around and write down Paul, you give me the first stages of disobedience. You understand? Read on what it says. As many will many will say... say that day, mm -hmm. Lord, Lord. That day means the judgment day. <laughs> On the judgment day, many are going to say to him, Jesus says, he's living son, I'm going to tell you, I told you to worship the heavenly father, don't call on me. Now, he says, and you know what's going to happen? On judgment day, this is going to happen. <laughs> many will say to me, in that day, again, what? Lord, Lord. Go ahead. Have we not prophesied in thy name? Did we not have the gift of prophecy in your name? And? In thy name has cast out devils. And we, they go touch, put your hands on, as they say. Getting the Holy Spirit and getting the get wicked spirits out of people. Go ahead. And in thy name done many wonderful works. And that's what Jesus said. They're going to be doing so many signs and wonders that if, if it was possible, they would fool the very elite. They're here preaching up a song. Just preaching and preaching and preaching and ain't teaching nothing Jesus taught. Everything he teaches is Paul. Corinthians says this. Acts says this. Galatians says Just watch him on television. Watch what books he keeps his attention on. Very few of these guys go to the book of Revelation. So when they do, they sit on television and say, Now what we think this means is this. Jesus didn't say what we think. Jesus said, You shall know the truth. Right? And the truth shall what? He didn't say nothing about, I think. So I watched one time one day, he got to a certain verse, he says, well, all the authorities agree <laughs> that this means this. I guess that makes it right, because a bunch of educated white folks got together and said that's what it means, but that makes it right. What about what the Bible says? You shall know the truth, and... Truth shall make you free. And he clears up by saying, man shall not live by bread alone, but by what? Every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord. So he tells us that we should live by the scriptures, go by the holy book. 
drop by philosophers and scholars and learned doctors so Jesus made fun of the scholars that said Egypt. He made fools of them. He said they're just dressed that way. <laughs> he told them to stay on the word of the Lord. Go back. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he that does the will of my Father, which is in heaven, see that? Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have I not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils? And in thy name does many wonderful works? <laughs> now what did Jesus says in 23 to them? He says, and then will I profess. Now it's his turn to make a profession. Now I will say this to them. What? I want y'all to read it to me. I never knew you. Read it again. I never knew you. He's going to tell them, I don't even know who you are, mister. <laughs> you wasn't teaching in my father's name. You followed Paul. And I told you not to. I don't even know you, Reverend Rip and Pastor Chicken. <laughs> He would tell the Pentecostals, you, the, whatever spirit was chasing you out of that room wasn't for me. <laughs> they said in the Bible, a spirit with two tongues casting fire into their heads. Well, if they did all of that there, how come they're still confused? As the disciples, 50 days, 50 days, the word Pentecost comes from 50 in Hebrew. For 50 days after Jesus' so-called ascension, you mean to tell me 50 days later they made all the mistakes that I keep showing you in these contradictions and they were being driven by the Holy Spirit? How can the Holy Spirit make mistakes? You understand what I'm saying? That had to be the writings of men. Go back and look at some of the beginnings of some of these books. And each one of these books, you go to the beginning of it and read it, it gets kind of funny when you start reading in the beginning. They say in Mark 1, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mark says that his book is the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Is that what it says right there? That's what it says. The only thing wrong with that is it comes after Matthew. <laughs> Shouldn't this be book 1 if it's the beginning of... <laughs> if it says there, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the, the prophet. In the prophet. So did he get a revelation from the Holy Spirit to write this? Oh no. That's not what he said. All he said, this book here is just the beginning of the revelation of Jesus Christ as uh, written in the prophet. Not in the prophecies, but the prophets themselves. Behold, I send my messenger. But that, then he goes back and quotes Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3. And speaks about John the Baptist, not even Jesus. He goes on to speak about the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Go to, right, just go to verse 3 of it. Right. The voice of one crying in the wilderness. He's talking about John the Baptist. But he calls it Jesus' gospel. He calls it the beginning gospel. It's the second book. And it wasn't inspired by the Holy Spirit. It wasn't inspired through the day of Pentecost. Go on to the next book. Mark. But that was Mark. I'm sorry, Luke. Now go to Luke. Right. What did he say? For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word, it seemed perfectly good to me also. Does this sound like this man is being driven by the Holy Spirit? Does it sound like he's getting some divine revelation? No, he sat down and read everybody else's book that I know more than them. It sounds like he's ego tripping to me. But he said, I'm the one perfect in information. And then went on to make contradictions. Go ahead. It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the <laughs> had, very first. He had perfect understanding of all things from the very beginning. This is one man, Luke. This is the mentality of these men. These men were not humble like Christ. They were not the meek as he spoke about. There's a bunch of ego tripping guys. <laughs> to write unto thee, in order, most excellent Theophilus, that thou mightest know the certainty of these things, of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. And then if you go to the Gospel of John, which is the next book, it goes all the way back to the beginning of creation. 
But then it goes into the Word. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Doesn't say nothing about a divine revelation here either. Correct? Right. And let's go on. Let's go on. Where are we going now? Acts is the next one. Okay. <laughs> Again. Go on. What did he say? The former trustee, which I have made, O Theophilus, of all that you began both to do and teach. Until until the day in which he was taken up, after that he had, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. He did not say anywhere here that he was inspired to write this book. This tell me this is after these apostles. All he was doing is writing the actions of the apostles. Where did they get their philosophies from? Where did they get their facts from? Go on to the book of Romans. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised before by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. No mention of divine revelation here. No mention of God inspired me to sit down and write this book here. Nowhere. And if you go into Corinthians, you'll see the same thing. Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God, right? And associates, whoever that might be, some Roman or Greek. And then you go to Corinthians 2, you'll find the same thing. And it'll go straight on through to Galatians, and you'll have the same problem. Nothing. Nowhere. But the book of Revelation, chapter 1, says what? This is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Which? Allah uh, gave unto him. See the difference? <laughs> See the difference in this one? This book here, the book of Revelation, they say, was given to Jesus from the Heavenly Father. There's a big difference there. This is a revelation, it says. And that's why most of the Christian preachers don't touch it. Because they're afraid of what it says at the very end, which means they believe in it. It says in the very end, in Revelation 22, and a very special number again, 19, what? And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, the law shall take his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. They are afraid of that point. That's why Reverend Ribbon never don't touch this book. They jump around it. They quote Paul, and they quote this, and they quote that. But when it comes down to the book of Revelation, you say, what does it mean? Uh, I, I don't know. It's a lot of mystical things here. It's a lot of parables in there. Well, Rev, you the man up front will tell us the mystical things in the Bible or sit down in the audience and get somebody up there that can do it. Because Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. He said, when you see that spirit, test that spirit. When a reverend gets up there, you supposed to question him to see if he knows what he's doing because you're putting your very soul in his hands. You're putting the future of whether or not you'll get into heaven in his hands. I don't care how well he stomps up and down and preaches and how nice of a raspy voice he has and how well the organ plays and how good the choir sings. That ain't got nothing to do with Judgment Day because there ain't going to be none of that there. It tells us there's already a choir in heaven and those are the heavenly hosts, the angels. They're around the throne of heaven singing day and night the praise of the Most High. And they ain't singing in English anyways. You can tell those families, the Hawkins brothers, and them to shut up. But the Lord says the angels are the ones who do the singing for him. We don't need it. All we need is to know the truth in order to what? To make yourself free. Free of what? Free of the curse that you put on yourself in Genesis. Free of disobedience to the first commandment. Christ Series. Now you can learn everything you ever wanted to know about the true story of the Messiah Jesus. Peace and blessings upon him. Take an adventure through the Christ series and you will be astounded by what you thought you knew.